Hello and welcome to the penultimate round of the FIA European Truck Racing Championship. Welcome to Carama, close and nearby to Madrid, which is hometown of Antonio Albacete. And he will take us on that track right now in a golf car. Your chief mechanic is always screaming. Un go cuando comienza. When you start. Do you need that from me today? Eh, vale, ok, sí, sí, sí. Go! Pero esto no corre mucho. But we are so slow. You know, it is important when you start the races and you are starting behind the first row, you don't see the lights. It is important that someone tells you when to start. Este circuito es, es especial porque... This is an old school circuit with very special curves. Y tiene curvas muy especiales. Toda la gente está muy cerca de la pista. And also here in Yarama, the people are very close to the circuit. And even with the helmet on in the truck, you can hear them shouting or with their chainsaws. Cuando gritan o cuando se ponen con las bocinas, va, va, va. And in the turn, you need to find a line on the inside, accelerating more and more, and you need to brake here very well. This is the spot where the brakes can easily block, and you can easily slide off the track. So he had the shortest ride right now and competing in front of his home crowd, of course. But also the Portuguese team is back with Jose Rodriguez in his race truck. Yes, of course, finish and also getting some routine being back on track again. So we will have a tough competition, some twisty curves over here. Let the fiesta begin. And the qualifying was delayed due to an incident happened at the free practice. This was Shane Brereton. He hit the barriers. Let's have a look at the pictures. Luckily, he could compete and all the others were back on track. This is the first qualifying of this weekend in Jarama. Stefan Fast with an odd issue there. The windscreen has completely shattered on his Tank Pool 24 racing Scania. Norbert Keys, however, championship leader under the Dunlop Bridge in the first qualifying session. And then round the final corner, once again, the young Hungarian goes and puts it on pole position. So Jose Rodriguez is here with his father and his son, but both of them are competing in the Spanish truck racing and he is back on track for the FIA European Truck Racing Championship and he is so delighted. I am really happy. I get confidence in the truck right now to get better lap by lap. It's Norbert Kish on pole position. We are ahead of race one. The first race at Harama this weekend, very shortly getting underway. Red lights are on and they extinguish now. And it's Norbert Kish that leads the field in towards turn one. Sacha ends with a better start. And Jose Rodriguez all over the grass towards turn one. Still nose to tail down in towards Nuvolari and Fangio. Sasha lands on the outside, looking around the outside of Norbert Kiesch, and it's all closing up in the background. There's contact a little further up the road. Jose Rodriguez all through the gravel, riding on board with Jamie Anderson now. Here is Jamie Anderson once again. Lots of chopping and changing contact with Rene Reinhardt. While they try and edge their way through sector one, but Norbert Kiesch already building that lead. You can 
see the home hero, Antonio Albacete, trying to keep up with the top three. And Teo Calvé pulling over to the left-hand side with some sort of issue. Elia Kolac up the road. Very heavy contact with Heinrich Clemens Hecker. Both trucks left stationary in the middle of the road. Riding on board with Luke Garrett. Teo Calvé heads in towards retirement with what was later discovered as an electrical issue with that number 20 Freightliner. Jamie Anderson and Rene Reynard nose to tail once again. Contact on lap one and they're definitely not pulling out of any sort of move. Still more bodywork strewn from the tail end of that truck. Van Fravor at Albafetti under ever increasing pressure from Adam Latchko. But eventually, come the end of race one, it was Norbert Kiesch to take another win this season, followed by Sacha Lenz and Jochen Hahn finishing in third, and Antonio Albatetti, a brilliant defensive drive, to finish in fourth place ahead of Latchko. A very happy Norbert Kiesch celebrates with his team after another win that he can add to his FIA European Truck Racing CV. Let's go to a few words. Uh, here in Harama, it's always really, really great. Except one time when I unfortunately pushed Antonio, then they didn't really like me at that year. But other than that, I think they are really, really nice fans and, uh, and really love truck racing. And you know, the atmosphere is really nice. You can hear the people cheering and everything. Robert Quiche evidently over the moon with the Spanish crowd pushing him forward today. And it definitely helped. So Norbert Kiesch took the win ahead of Sasha Lenz and Jochen Hahn rounding out your podium. And then of course, we can't forget Antonio Albatetti, fourth place, definitely the fan favourite. It was definitely a race of what could have been for Anthony Janiek. There or thereabouts throughout, just couldn't quite piece it all together. And the rest of the field is there as well. Jamie Anderson with a penalty drops him down to 13th place, somewhat out of position for the young Brit. We're here at the pole position in Steffi Harm. So congratulations first, but the race is yet to start. What are your tactics? Yeah, you know, it's always great to start from the pole position. Uh, for sure, it's the reverse grid. Uh, I know that all the fast ones are behind me. So I try to make a good start, maybe uh, stay in front. This is the plan. And then we will see if we can keep it. And now we are ready for race two. So the second race of the weekend, very shortly getting underway. It's Steffi Harm leading the order down towards the start finish line. We go, green lights are on and Steffi Harm leads the pack towards turn one. Rene Reynard alongside and Andre Kersim trying to keep in touch with the Iveco driver leading the way. In towards turn one we go, Rene Reynard on the outside. Andre Kersim looking to piece his way in towards second place. They're still side by side in the background. There's a little bit of contact. Elia Kolach finds herself all over the grass. Steffi Helm desperately trying to build up that gap. Renault Reynard and Andre Kersim side by side for second place. And then we get back to Stefan Faust and the number 14 of Jose Rodriguez. Both trading places once again. So at this point, Steffi Helm has started to work her way forward. Andre Kersim under pressure from Antonio Albatetti. Renault Reynard finds himself in the tyre wall with extensive damage on his Iveco. And Jochen Hahn befell issues as well, supposedly after the contact with Rene. You can see the lead gap is once again closing up. Five trucks all battling for first place. And it was Adam Lachko and Jose Rodriguez battling away, but back to the paddock went Rene Reynard into retirement. Then the mid-pack once again is the best place to watch some really close truck racing. Shane Brereton, Stefan Fast nose to tail. Stefan Fast so desperate to make up time, he ran wide. Jamie Anderson came back into it. While all that was going on, the lead was changing. Andre Kersim late on the brakes, up the inside, just edging the gap between himself and Steffi Halm. And that was Andre in the number 11 Iveco into the lead. Steffi Halm but left with yet more attacking to do.
by this point, Andre Kersim had allowed himself a little bit more time to the lead, and Steffi Haum coming under ever-increasing pressure from the local Spaniard of Antonio Albacete. Teo Calve also chasing down that lead pack. Once again, it was Shane Brereton and Stefan Fast battling away, but this time with a mistake from Stefan Fast, costing him a position. Anthony Janiek worked his way by. The lead gap massively opened up. Andre Kersim well and truly up the road from Steffi Haum. Antonio Albatetti just sat behind with Norbert Kiesch hot on his heels. Adam Machko gave it a go around the outside of Sacha Lenz and just about got the move done before they reached the apex at Pegaso. But it was Andre Kersim that took the win here at Harama, followed by Steffi Alm and just about Antonio Albatetti to take third place in the second race of the weekend. Andre Kersim clambering out the cockpit of his Ibeco, celebrating with his team over the moon with yet another win this season. So onto the podium they went. Of course, Antonio Arbatetti getting the bigger cheers of them all. Steffi Helm joining them. But it was Andre Kersin that took top honours in the second race of the weekend at Rama. Let's go down to Christina with an interview with Andre. I know Steffi is, uh, she, she, can, she can make it very hard for overtaking. And I know Adam was behind me, Antonio was behind me. And yeah, now you have to go in the front and you have to show in the mirror because the faster guys are behind you. But yes, it was okay. The incredibly committed Spanish ground stayed from early this morning till the very last race of the day. And it was well and truly worth it. Andre Kersim took the win, followed by Steffi Helm. And then of course, the home favorite, Antonio Albacete, crossing the line in third. Teo Calve, after a poor race one, managed to finish eighth place from starting on the very back row of the grid, followed by the two Brits, Jamie Anderson and Shane Brereton, ninth and tenth. Then we get back to Anthony Janiek, just squeezing past Stefan Fast in the closing stages of the race. Heinrich Clementeca, somewhat off the pace in the final race of the weekend. Six-time champion Jochen Hahn celebrating his 25th anniversary and Andreas Ahn spoke to him. Yes, Jochen, a good occasion. Team Hahn Racing is celebrating 25 years of truck racing this year. When it all started in 1996, was it foreseeable that it would amount to 25 years? Of course not. It started very wildly. That was a lifelong dream from my father, from Connie. It's brutal how it has developed over the years. Today we are an integral part of the racing series and we are brutally proud. Who knows, maybe in 25 years we will talk again. Who knows how old we will be. What was your role back then when your dad was racing? The main job was to look good. <laughs> no. I was a truck mechanic, I was basically Connie's mechanic. So back then we put together a mechanic crew from well-known people, friends, and then it grew. Your first milestone was together with Mercedes until 2007. Was that a very successful time or a difficult time? That was a difficult time because the learning process was of course in full swing. The phase then lasted until 2011 when we became European champions for the first time. And that was the combination of all years starting from 1996. You were then European champion and the racing driver, but did your dad look at technology? Was he your mechanic? Dad wasn't the mechanic, dad was a Don. That was the boss. He still is today on the truck here that he drove last is Konrad Hahn. Connie is part of who we are today. Title number five and number six were won with Iveco, the third formative phase for the team. Yeah, at the beginning many people said, how can you do it with Iveco? But stop, stop. We were at Mercedes, we were at MAN and we feel at home today because Iveco exactly represents the value a family collaboration on equal terms. When we get in the direction that we are technically back to the level where we want to go, 
where I have reached the end of my zenith, wherever it is, then a generation has to be ready, so our son, Lucas, and in some way our daughter Jacqueline will also play a part in this area. And then we see that Lucas becomes just as successful in motorsport as his father and his grandfather. So the new generation is on board, Efren. Quantos años tiene? Cinco. He's five years old. And this is your truck. Is that to, to camion? Si. Sí. Ya conduces? Si. Sí. He's driving sí. this truck. Es eléctrico. Ah, this is an electric truck, so he's right up for the future. We really appreciate that. Gracias. Es tu aplauso. Es tu aplauso. Clear the youngest driver here. Echa Rama. Due to lubricates on the track, we had a delay ahead of race three. The FIA held a driver's meeting informing everyone and afterwards the decision was made that they were testing three laps on the racetrack. So afterwards the drivers met again and then the decision was made that the race can take place under the yellow flag. This is Tony Iden. Yes, I think we've taken every precaution we can. Um, they know what the situation is. We will start under yellow flags. We will have yellow flags on the section which is affected. If anybody does anything wrong, then we've told them quite clearly that um, we will black flag people who don't, don't behave, which is a normal procedure anyhow. Um, and we're proceeding with caution. Antonio Bassetti, you uh, mentioned that it would be a good idea Racing under yellow flag, how happy are you with the decision? Uh, yeah, I think we can start with yellow flags and then uh, in the place that there is uh, some oil, we can have uh, yellow flags and then we can race. So yeah, we will see. I mean, it's going to be a very difficult race, but uh, we, I think we have to race for the whole people waiting there. You know, they, they are waiting the, the whole morning and the water. So I think we have to take care. We have to be careful, but uh, race for these people. third race of the weekend was a wet one indeed getting underway slightly delayed due to some oil down on the tarmac it was yellow flag conditions for the first three laps of racing eventually we got under green flag conditions and up at the head of affairs it was Norbert Keish and Antonio Albertetti miles up the road ahead of Lachko who was fending off Jochen Hahn Jochen Hahn trying everything he could looking up the inside and then the outside and trading a little bit of paint with Adam Lachko and he just couldn't quite work his way in towards third place. Sasha Lenz was closing up on the pair of them. Here we can see Andre Kersin battling away with the young Frenchman of Teo Calve. They were both door to door for quite a substantial amount of time in this race. Eventually Teo just had to give up on that move. It's almost three wide in the background peering through the haze and those wet conditions catching a few people out, notably Jose Rodriguez out at Portago, all the way through the gravel, in towards the grass and narrowly avoiding the wall. But good driving from Jose to rejoin the circuit as safely as possible. A little later on, once again, wet conditions catching the drivers out. It was Anthony Janiek going for a bit of a moment all over the grass through Ascari, just in front of Jose Rodriguez. So through the final corner for the final time, Norbert Quiche comes across the line to take the win ahead of home favourite Antonio Albatetti in second, then Lachko across the line in third. So the pair of them in their MANs work their way back towards victory lane. And there is the number 41 of Norbert Quiche ahead of Antonio Albatetti and rather second-hand looking number 55 of Adam Lachko who drove that whole race without a driver's side windscreen wiper. But Norbert Kiesch, the eventual winner, took to the top step of the podium ahead of Antonio Albatetti and Adam Lachko. The start was a usual wet race start that we usually have when it's really raining. And, you know, 
it was almost drying up. And when we go out to the grid, it started to rain like very heavy again. So another weekend of mixed conditions, but this is how they finished for the third race of the weekend. Norbert Kiesch started on a pole and finished on the top step of the podium, followed by the home favourite Antonio Albatetti. Adam Lachko crossed the line in third. Teo Calve never managed to get past Andre Kersim and had to settle for eighth place. Elia Kolach, however, up in ninth. Brilliant stuff. And the final few finishes, of course, no retirements in the third race of the weekend, but the Brits somewhat off the pace. Jamie Anderson, Luke Garrett and Shane Brereton, 12th, 14th and 16th. And for the first time, the Bagera Racing teammates of Calvay and Koloch were on the podium together. Calvay P1, Koloch P2. So finally, we had three Bugira racers on the podiums. And this is the interview with Tio Calvay and Alia Koloch together. Yeah, it's really nice to have her in the podium. Uh, I think it's good for her. She, she learned a lot and uh, even under the rain because she has no experience under the rain, a little bit like me. Yeah, my first champagne spray. Not too bad, but uh, I'm happy with second place and a uh, top 10 finish, P9, and uh, I'm very happy with today's race and looking forward to the next one. And now we are ready for race four. So Teo Calve on reverse grid pole position, led them across the line for the first time in towards turn one, side by side with Andre Gersim and Steffi Helm trying to carve her way through the order and work her way into second place as well. Lots of action going on in the mid pack, lots of door bashing but Steffi Helm up at the head of affairs working her way up into second place Andre Kersim down into third Adam Latchko trying to fend off the attentions of Jochen Hahn Janiek all over the gravel on the run up towards Le Mans Jochen Hahn back up the inside of Latchko as well now On the exit of Farina, you can see at the bottom of your screen, Luke Garrett just making contact with the tail end of Heinrich Clementeca, riding on board with the smart witness camera in the MAN of Anthony Janiak, getting held up by that one. And then we see once again another truck off the road. This time it was Rene Reinhardt meeting the tyre wall on the exit of Monza, but rejoining as safely as possible. Aliyah Koloch, a fair way up the order in front of Shane Brereton and the recovering Anthony Janiak. Contact between Jochen Hahn and Andre Kersim. Andre Kersim forced wide, but he does manage to get a full boost and propels himself up the hill with Adam Lachko in tow. In towards Monza, Lachko sideways on the brakes, up the inside, elbows the door open, and from then on, it was somewhat sedate. But for the first time in his European Truck Racing Championship career, Teo Calve takes an overall win with Steffi Halm finishing in second and Andre Kersim in third and the home favourite Antonio Arbuthetti in the number 23 MAN and then the number 25 MAN of Heinrich Clementeca doing donuts in front of the brilliant fans here in Spain. Well done to Teo Calve. It's my first, uh, first time in the first position in Europe so I'm really happy. I had a really good pace during all the race, lap after lap, improved uh, the, the laps and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. <laughs> So the weekend here at Tarama in San Sebastián de los Reyes, just north of Madrid, closes out with a new first-time winner here in the FIA ETRC. It's Teo Calve in the Baguera Racing Freightliner. Steffi Halm with another good finish, another podium in second. Andre Kersim in third. Norbert Kiesch somewhat out of place down in fifth. Antonio Albatetti rounded out his home weekend in seventh. And Shane Brereton slowly falling away from that Goodyear Cup title down in 11th place. Not a great weekend from himself, but Harama, what a place to be.
So after a weekend of racing here at Tarama, this is how they look at the championship standings. Norbert Kiesch extends his lead margin and it's Sasha Lenz and Adam Lachko second and third. They came into the round three points apart. They will leave the round three points apart. And home favourite Albathetti remains in fourth. Shane Brereton still in the lead of the Goodyear Cup, but Teo Calve is getting dangerously close. What a race weekend this was at Gerama. We had one sunny day, one rainy day. We had race on the yellow flag. Whew. So it's time to lie back and um, can I drive this thing? Oh, I, I don't think so.